Hey, look, it's the double wide dudes. Ooh, it's go time. All right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of Double Wide Dudes. Before we get into the fifth episode of uh, Home Buying Process, AP, uh, I saw an article come across my feed uh, about the Bleacher Report that Jonathan Simmons got traded to the Magic, man. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's, that's your boy. You were, <laughs> you were backing him up there for a little bit. I know. We even shouted him out here on the podcast when they were in the playoffs. But, yeah, man, he's a three-year deal with the Orlando Magic. And definitely sorry to see him go. His two years with the Spurs, he brought the uh, – what were you calling it? We were talking about him earlier. The really? Zaz. The Zaz. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know what that means, but I know he brought it, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. a little flashiness. Just I, the, the Spurs are so old school and um, pure basketball that they don't really have none of the flashy stuff. Yeah, you know? that's what he was bringing. But sometimes you you just want to see the other team get dunked on, right? Yeah, and and that's what he did. But he he definitely earned it, Mousetrap. He uh, he made a name for himself, especially during the playoffs. And uh, it, it just got to the point where we couldn't afford him. Mm-hmm. So good on him, man. Yeah, he's he's a good player. Um, I know. Thinking of work, um, I think we got the Chavez video right about wrapped up, huh? That final final clip. Yeah, yeah. Adam over there at White Cloud Media Group is is putting the final touches on uh, this video. That man, I was thinking back. We we started this thing back in March. Mm-hmm. You know, we we did our first shots at the closing. Um, with, with Leroy and Michelle there um, signing the paperwork to get all this started. And now uh, we're at the finish line and, and really excited to see that finished video that Adam comes out with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're putting together some good stuff. He was uh, showing me some of his other clips that he's done, some of the wedding videos he's done in the past. Um, it's just amazing, man. I mean, drones are incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and like like I told Adam, it's, it's, it's one thing to take pictures or videos from a drone, but... Um, just the artistry he's able mm-hmm. to put to videos and whatnot. And, you know, he did that that video with the drones following the Chavez home from the factory to the property. Mm-hmm. Um, but did, did you see that Viper video they did? Yeah, he showed it to me. Yeah, that thing was was just out of this world. Yeah, the editing is is incredible. I mean, editing this podcast, I, I struggle a little bit. You know, cutting it and making sure it sounds crispy. But but some of the shots that that I saw in that video and, and the timing of the music. It's just impressive. So it's it's I'm I'm happy Adam and Wes over at White Cloud is was able to deal with us, and uh, it's just a good group, good group of guys. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, when we jump into this episode, let's um, uh, give the listeners the next step in the home buying process. Uh, uh, just to sum up the first four, uh, we talked about you know finding a piece of property, knowing where you're going to put the home. Um, Choosing a floor plan, what's going to be the best space for your family, and then knowing the building process and, and how these homes are built. Um, the next uh, step, AP, would be finding a retailer. Yeah. Now you got to choose the team you want to work with uh, to help you get to the finish line. Um, you know, a, lo- a lot of these retailers sell the same product. Um, they're able to, they have access to the same factories. Um, they can get it sent from the same location. But it really comes down to on who you feel comfortable with and uh, what team can ultimately get you what you need. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, in some of the previous episodes, Mousetrap, we, we've spent a lot of time really um, dissecting the process of negotiating with retailers. We talked about in our very first segment on depreciation, how to get the best price um, out there in the industry. And you hit the nail right on the head, Mousetrap. It's going to be a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. You're going to know within the first five, ten minutes of, of talking with this this company if that's the right team for you. Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard to really describe. It's hard to put in words. Um, there's not some scientific method to figuring it all out. Um, just trust your gut. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's the biggest thing I can say that, that we really haven't elaborated on already when it comes to choosing that retailer. Yeah. Yeah, that gut feeling and... When it comes to any buying process, I know buying a home is one of the biggest ones you'll take part in, but when you go out shopping, you know, no one really likes to deal with sales guys these days, right? It's just <laughs> right. a bunch of games and gimmicks that homeowners or potential homeowners feel like they're getting themselves into, and they dread the the opportunity to go out and search for homes just because, um, you know, they don't want to take part in that. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a very adult decision, mm-hmm. right? And, and I think people want and deserve to be treated like adults. Exactly. Right? Just tell me what it is up front, good, bad, and different. Tell me what I need to know. Mm-hmm. You know, don't just try to spoon feed me what you think I want to hear. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's get to the finish line together while, while moving forward with reality, right? Yeah. And how AP was saying about getting the best price, um, really we found knowing what the home cost or what they're selling it for is going to be the first thing you're going to need to know. There's a lot of moving parts on getting the home to the finish line and not to your property. And, um, you know, the retailer is really responsible for delivering and setting the home up to the state code. So that's one of the first price points um, that you need to focus on. Uh, The second one is going to be what the improvements cost. So everything exterior of the home, like the base pad, skirting, the decks, connecting the home to utilities, um, that's another price point that you're going to have to figure out before moving to the closing table. Right, right. And and insisting before you start dealing with closing on a physical site inspection. You know, if you're buying a new home, a manufactured modular home, mobile home, whatever it is, you really need to insist on a physical site inspection, Mm -hmm. having someone meet you face-to-face at your property um, so that you can not only show them exactly where you want your home to be, um, also ask questions. You know, is, is my electric up to code? Is it going to work for my new house? What size base pad or this, that, and the other? And that's what construction managers, that's what site inspections are, are there to do. Um, you know, once you've closed, once you've bought a house, if you find out you don't have electric and it's going to cost five grand to get it there, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's one of those things. It's too late to go back. So I strongly, strongly urge folks when going through the process to insist on having the site inspection done up front yeah i mean how many horror stories have you heard about uh, retailers selling the home and uh, not even doing one of those come to find out there's a high elevation needed to be installed uh, you're in a flood zone the, there's a fence line and your, your neighbors won't let you cross um, their property yeah I mean, just all types of, of stuff that you definitely need to find out before even purchasing the home because you don't even know what costs you're going to confront. Now at Broston, we don't charge for that. How would a customer take advantage of, of getting a free site inspection ordered? Well, all we ask for Mousetrap is either a pre-approval or proof of funds if it's going to be a cash purchase. And, um, you know, if you're looking to get that free site inspection and you don't already have a bank approval, we make it real easy and, again, free of charge to get those exact numbers from the lender um, so at this part of the process, obviously, you're not going to know the exact options or upgrades you want in the home, um, and, and you're not going to know the exact numbers for any site work or improvements. So what we do at this part of the process, um, at least to give you a rough idea of monthly payment, down payment, that kind of thing, is use uh, what we call allowances. Improvement allowance for things we might be doing to the property, and then an upgrade allowance for things we might be doing to the home. And um, with those two allowances, plus all the other numbers we've got publicly posted on our website, you get a pretty good idea of what uh, you need to go ahead and submit to the bank for. And um, at at that part of the process, that's really where where you guys step in, right? Yeah. So elaborate a little bit more on just how easy it is to get started with the application process. Yeah. Yeah. So once you know what floor plan we're going with and we're going to shoot up an application to the bank... Uh, my job is just to really help you make the best first impression. So the first documents needed um, along with the app to submit is going to be four documents. Um, now, if you work for a company that pays you in checks and, and you get a W-2 at the end of the year, the bank's going to want to see the previous two years on that. So 2017, for example, they would want 2015 and 2016 um, to see the wages that you reported. Okay. Um, the other, to verify income, they want to see the last two pay stubs. Um, so the last two ones that you received, they're going to want to see documents of that. And the other ones is going to be the ID and your social. Right. So those four, together with the application, is what's needed for a pre-approval. You know? Yeah, and you guys do an awesome job with our customers um, collecting that up front. And one of the reasons we like to ask for that up front, Mousetrap, we review all this stuff and we review your application before we send it up to the bank. You know, you, you mentioned first impression and I was always taught growing up, you only get one chance at a first impression. Mm-hmm. Sometimes folks will put on the home application what they bring home, what's actually on that check, mm-hmm. whereas the bank wants to see what it is before taxes. 
So uh, allowing us to find and correct that stuff um, by giving us that information up front um, actually allows us, Broston Mobile Homes, to make that first initial impression for our customers as good as it possibly can be. Yeah. Could you imagine submitting an application, um, getting excited because the retailer told you they can promise you this and that, and coming to find out that the bank's just not going to allow it? Yeah. Yeah. And, th- and that's really what we want to eliminate. You know, when we get a, an approval for a customer, we don't want it to be a pre approval um, contingent on proving this, this, and that. You know, for the most part, we like to go into this deal with our customer in the bank being able to prove that day one out the gate. Mm-hmm. And um, what that does for our customers as well, once they are approved, the process to closing is that much quicker because yeah. we've already cleared a lot of that off. Mm-hmm. So I guess for, for the purpose of this podcast, um, you know, we got to assume that we've got all conditions, we've submitted the application, it's gotten approved. Mm-hmm. One thing we do, Mousetrap, is for the most part, we'll submit these applications asking the bank for the bare minimum down payment that they allow, mm-hmm. which is generally 5%. And the bank either comes back and says, yes, that will work, or no, but here's what will work. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, Mousetrap, our customers aren't going to just get a flat no. Yeah. Right. So we find an approval that works. Um, they're comfortable with down payment, monthly payment. Um, the, the last part is getting all the conditions cleared. Okay. And generally, that's simple stuff like the land deed, where the home's going to go, or a verification filled out by your HR department. For the most part, we try to get the, the bulk of the stuff done up front. And this is also the part of the process where that site inspection is getting done. Mm-hmm. Right. So on your end, I know it's, it's while I'm doing the clearing conditions and working with the bank to get that part done, and um, working with our construction manager to get the site inspection done, um, you guys are doing a lot to make sure that once the home arrives, it's exactly what they wanted. Yeah, get, and expected. Right? Yeah. So how, how's that process go on your end? Yeah, yeah. So the next thing after submitting the site inspection, um, the way the construction manager can take care of that, is finalizing the colors and, and the options in the house. This is really a fun part. Um, the customer knows it's getting a little more real. This is actually going to happen. Um, so we get a, a spec sheet from the factory. And, and this part's real important, guys. This is really key. Um, if it, In this industry, if it's not on paper, it's not going to get done. So some of the things that we take care of, um, we, we have the customer look over a spec sheet. And, and that's from the factory, and that shows you what's all going to go in the house. And, and, of course, we get that final document once we discuss what's going in it. But once you see that, you're going to see what model you have, what options are in it, what color the home's going to be, um, and all that. So you're going to have your peace of mind in knowing that what you think is going to be done is actually going to get done. So uh, the spec sheet's really important. Um, another document that we clear and uh, make sure we have on file is, is a final purchase agreement. That way you know when it gets time to close with Alberto or with any retailer comes down to close on the home, um, that number's not going to change, right? The, you're going to see the each individual cost of the options, the delivery, the home, everything that, that you agreed on with your housing consultant, um, that final purchase agreement is going to show you the exact dollar amount. And Yeah, and I, th- I think you hit on a, a really key point, Mousetrap, is knowing what that dollar amount is before you go to sign paperwork. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can think of two families just in the last month that thought they were going to be paying, you know, 500 and something a month for a house when, you know, the reality was the retailer had left off what taxes and insurance were going to be and their payments were almost 700 a month. Yeah. You know, and and you don't want to be caught off guard or surprised at closing. And and I think um, what happens is, is people are so, you know, the emotions are running high. You're excited. You can't wait to get to the the closing table and you've done so much you've sent so much paperwork to the bank and talked to so many people on the phone and you're just ready to become a homeowner right Mm -hmm. and um, some companies you know definitely not all um, but there are still some companies out there that will try to pull a fast one on you at closing um, because they know how excited you are right so having that final purchase agreement knowing what your final monthly payment is going to be what your final down payment is going to be before you go to close and then making sure of course at closing that all of that matches what you're signing exactly yeah you want to make sure when you get to the closing table that there's no surprises but once the home's closed the the project begins 
So tune into the next episode. We're going to cover just that. We're going to break this one up into two episodes. Um, the first one we covered uh, choosing a retailer and, and closing on the home. And the next one we'll talk about what goes into the construction process, time frame, and, and what to expect once you finally move in. Thanks for tuning into this episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.